everybody, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to do a still life with wine and cheese. A good subject always, and especially for the fall. And um, you can see today I'm going to work on a 20 by 20 canvas. And this is painted with my red, which is like a cadmium red. I think it's medium or it could be light. Um, it's just a cad, it says on the tube, it's a student grade paint, but it's a cadmium red. I, I buy a student grade paint to cover my canvas um, to just do the underpainting, and I use a sponge brush and I kind of put it on very wet so it's not too thick and I don't lose the tooth of my canvas. This is a photograph of a little still life that I set up. Can you see that, Jane? I set the yeah. still life up in uh, at my house and this is what I'm going to paint today. And, you know, you can change things around. But I encourage everyone to set up your own still life. And it's not easy because, you know, just to get those, uh, ar the arrangement just the way you want it, or to make things look right, they have to overlap. Or, you know, you have to have something tall and something on the bottom. And you don't want to paint your still life to every, all your objects too close to the bottom of your canvas. So you don't want to, I want to fill the canvas with my image, but I don't want to have everything sitting at the bottom. It's gonna, there's got to be room for a table. So um, here we go. We're going to start painting and thanks for joining me. And again, if you want to buy a full hours lesson, you can go to my website janeslifkagallery.com and go to the shop page and you can we have 10 classes available right now. Thank you. I'm ready to start. I'm going to dip into my Hooker's Green Deep, which is almost black, really dark, and a little bit of alizarin crimson, which will make my paint very uh, black, almost looking, but it's not actually black, but it's a, a very deep green. And I'm going to start just by drawing this now, if you can see the picture, I don't like the, uh, this is just some um, eucalyptus in there, but I'm going to make hydrangeas in there because that's what I, that's my go-to flower. And I'm just going to kind of just quickly sketch in, this is a big picture I bought at an art show, some ceramic, nice pottery. And um, I'm going to do my, I'm going to suggest that these are going to be hydrangeas. And I, but to start off, I'm just going to, I need to know where they're going to be. So this is the design part. And I'm going to, and I make them black, and I know they're not going to be black. But this is just directing me or, um, you know, letting me design where they're going to be. And it's a, and they're the base of, you'll see, you'll see what I'm going to do. I like to fill my canvas when I do in a still life. I like to fill the whole canvas with my image. I don't like little still lifes that are kind of lost. Then you gotta, then it's you gotta worry about the background a lot. And this one we don't. Um, I'm going to draw next. I'm just gonna put like maybe there's some a block of cheese right here on a plate. You know, if I know I'm, you know, drawing with paint, but so, you, you can, if, if you need to, if you make a mistake or you don't like a line that you put in, while it's wet, you can just wipe it right off. If it dries, and then you can just start redrawing with maybe white where you can see what you're doing. I'm going to put the wine glass, I'm going to overlap it right here. I'm going to, and you all know that I'm painting this at an angle, <laughs> so. I'm going to put my wine glass here. I think I'll bring it up a little bit. And that'll be just the wine that's inside. And when you do a wine bottle, a really good way to get it to be um, even, because they can get so wonky, is you make a sort of like a church window. I'm going to go right through the glass. And then the top which just goes like that. So it's a little bit more even that way. I'm going to put a piece of fruit right here. Maybe a pear. And 
that's pretty, I pretty much filled the canvas, so I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to take my, uh, I'm, you've been using my one inch Princeton 6300 series. Dakota. Right, Dakota <laughs> series, thanks Jane. And um, I love this brush, it does, it, it's magic. Notice I have my, there's no tangents, and a tangent is when two shapes share the same line. And we don't want that to happen, so this glass is overlapping both of these, this is overlapping this, and uh, this might be a little bit of a tangent right here. I'll stick this uh, little cutting board. I'm just going to have it go right in front of that pair. The next thing I do is I'm going to rinse all that dark paint off my brush and I'm going to dip into some pure white and I'm going to go right into where my flowers are. They're going to be wet right now. And I'm picking up a little bit of that hooker's green underneath. I'm going to let it dry. This is just the first step of doing these flowers. This paint's going to soak in, probably turn gray, but that's just the first step. See, leaving that black or dark green underneath, I call it black, but it's, uh, gives it depth. It gives the flowers depth already. Unless, you know, if I just started off with this white, it would be ugh, a little bit monotonous and, it, and the flowers would not have depth. I'm going to show my light, which is coming, I'm just going to make it coming from uh, the left side. You know, the photograph that I'm using. It has it coming from the right side, the light. So, all right, we're changed my mind. We're gonna do the right side. And I'm just gonna go, cause that'll confuse you if I, if you look at the photograph. This cheese is a little wonky, but it's all right. I like wonky. It's better than, you know, what's the saying? Um, a saying. There's a saying. <laughs> There's a saying. Um, charmingly incorrect versus tediously correct. One of my favorite things. So that gives myself permission to be a little bit off on my drawing or a little bit wonky here and there. And then I think I'll make a label right here. Just kind of going in with my lights. This is the lighter side of the bottle. And the lighter side of my fruit down here. This is light. Just trying to block in my lights. And then my table. I always make white tablecloths. It just looks, to me it looks the best. I'm going way down here too low. Still just using hooker's green and white so far. So, the next color that I like to use is this beautiful shadow color and I dip, and I don't make pools of color, I don't make puddles of color, and um, I dip into the, maybe some purple, brilliant purple, some light blue violet, some light blue, which is like a robin's egg blue, and then maybe a little bit of Naples yellow. All that glop <laughs> is on my brush, and it's going to come out together at this, you know, just come out in little streaks, and um, it's a beautiful combination. And I'm making the shadow side of my picture. going right through the glass. Shadow side of my cheese. Shadow side of my fruit. Just pop a little bit here. This is gonna be real dark. Okay, so I kinda have a feeling, now do you see that I've got my values, I've got my design, I've got my values, and now I can really just start to paint. 
this is, I got a lot of these issues worked out, and now it's just kind of fun to go in and start defining things and explaining things a little bit more. I'm going to dip into um, some cadmium yellow medium and then with some hooker's green. And I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to make some stems. And I'm going to take this great brush. I'm going to put the point side down. I'm going to smash it. It's dripping. I'm going to smash it, pull it, and then lift it to a point. And it makes these nice little leaves. See all those drips? And I don't stress about things like that because um, it's early in the painting. I can fix it. Um, if I'm demonstrating in front of a live audience or like my classes, everybody freaks out when they see the drips. But, you know, sometimes they're there for a reason. All of a sudden, I don't know. Me, I always call it the painting angels. That painting angel behind your shoulder is saying, you need a vertical right there and it'll drip. So, I'm going to cover it with a, just a little bit of white here just so I don't lose my flower. And now it's dripping some more. I paint with a lot of paint and a lot of water. Okay, so, and now I'm going to take, I'm going to cut in my background, which I think I don't have that much background. So, I'm going to take that hooker's green and the alizarin crimson, and I'm just going to make a nice, rich, dark background. It's fall, and it just seems to be a nice um, kind of a, it's got that nice fall feeling to it, these dark, rich backgrounds. Even in Florida, we feel it. So I'm um, going to keep going. Now, I know my bottle is going to be still working out my, my bottle is going to be a dark bottle, which is going to get kind of lost against the background, so I'll have to figure something out. Probably have to, you can always, you know, do lights against darks, you know, there's always got to be a contrast. So maybe that edge over there is just going to be a little bit on the lighter side. And then I could darken it up right there. Now, if the light's coming this way, this guy is going to be cast in a shadow. There it is. It's going to be shadow here. I don't have much room for shadows, so I'm not real worried about it. It's coming together, uh, I think. And, you know, when I'm doing these acrylics, I've got to let it dry at some point. When it gets, when the whole canvas is wet, you stop, you let it dry. You could take it out in the sun, which we don't have today, it's raining. But I use a hair dryer or just give it some time and let it completely dry before you go back in and make it pop. I'm, going, I'm putting some red wine in this glass. And what colors are you, are oh, you using? Oh, I'm sorry. That's that, okay. was just, that was just a lizard, <laughs> a lizard crimson. Okay. And I'm going to go to a smaller brush right now and you know, it's, it's, it looks almost like a watercolor. It's so wet and it's just, so, I love it. I mean, I don't love just this painting, but I love this process of just uh, manipulating the paint. And, and you can't do it unless you put enough paint on your palette. I think the number one issue I have with students is when I go around the room when they're painting, I look at what they're painting with and it's just these little teeny smidges of paint. And they're not they're not enjoying the process of slapping it on. And uh, I know it's expensive, but it'll be so worth it.
I don't, I may, I'm outlining with a little bit of white or just some white, but I'm breaking up my line. I'm not continuously outlining it. I'm breaking it up in some areas. The lighter part of any liquid in a glass is always, I mean, the, the, the top part is always a little bit lighter. Is that Naples yellow you're mixing? You know, I, I just picked up some stuff. Okay. It's, it's a little bit of white with some, yeah, Naples yellow in there, but I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it this way. I've always had, have, I always kind of have a issue with trying to figure out the right colors to use for the top of my white wine, I mean red wine. So I'll just, uh, I'll worry about that later. I'm going to get some more alizarin crimson and I'm going to, see it's just wet. If you paint over wet paint, it's not going to do anything except smear together. And it's not going to work. So, um, at this point, oh, well, I'm going to do one more thing and then I'm going to let it dry and come back for the finish. I'm going to throw a little bit so I know what I'm doing here. I've got green here, which I'm losing. Doesn't this look wet, Jane? <laughs> yes, it does. It's really wet. I always keep a rag in my left hand here. Um, I'm going to make my little pear right here. Just kind of so I know where the green is. It's going to match the green in these leaves. This really needs to dry, but um, it's going to work. And this this guy's floating up here, but he will. To make uh, your object not look like it's floating, you always make it very dark underneath. And that's just just the hooker's green. Okay. And the green for the pear was. It's hooker's green with cad yellow. Okay. The same I used in these leaves, which I've seemed to have lost, <laughs> but <laughs> they'll come back. My paint is just very wet today, but um, I think this is going to work. Uh, this is going to be popped out with some Naples yellow after it dries, and the flowers are going to pop out beautifully, very white. And I probably will redo my leaves again. These will be great under leaves or, or leaves in the background. So they're going to work. Everything's going to work I'm, because I'm going to make it work. So I'll be back when it's dry. Okay, I'm, I'm back, and this is totally dry. Um, we let time lapse, and I hit it with a hair dryer, and uh, so it's it's pretty dry, and that will make everything that I put on seem really fresh. So let's go back in and start with our flowers. And I'm just look how that just because it's dry. If that had been wet, that would have just smeared right in just pops. Yep, I'm pretty excited. I'm hitting, well, I'm hitting one side of the flower. You know, I'm so used to putting my, uh, oops, my light source coming from the left. I was doing that again. But it doesn't matter. Those flowers could have been bent in that direction. And I'm going to dip into some hooker's green and some cadmium yellow. And you know, I need it to be brighter. I'm so gonna add a little white and I'm gonna do this again to, to make it stand out. It's still not standing out as much as I want it to. More white to my hooker's green. Now I can see it a little better. I always like to have my flowers and leaves going off the side of the canvas. I don't want it to look like I was just trying to squeeze everything in. I'm going to hit the light side of my vase again. Pitcher, vase. Now, I don't, 
If I'm going to use white, I want to I want to add some colors to my white. So I think I'll just put a little bit of maybe some Naples yellow in there. What if I were to try a little bit of light blue? Oop, Oops. a lot. Okay, <laughs> I just wiped it right off my uh, brush, but I'm going to smear it around a little bit. Mm -hmm. But just, I mean, it's still reading as a light color picture, but it's just more interesting than just plain white. Let's go over here. You're not getting the side of my face in this, are you, Jay? No. Okay, good. All right. So, and then, um, this is the side of the cheese. It's nice and bright. Is that Naples yellow? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, it's Naples yellow, and I'm added a little white to it to brighten it up. And this is the side of the cutting board. It's acting as a plate for the cheese and then it's going to be in shadow so I'm going to take some blue some purple and some raw sienna which is a light brown and just kind of go down here on the side of the cutting board this is all shadow in here it's going to probably be shadow there too I'm going to get, I've got my floating um, pair. We'll fix it. I'm going to add a brighter side. I'm going to hit the yellow with some white and hit. Just the brighter side of that pair. You know, if you're doing this and you're, you're struggling like with the pair or something, like I almost am, uh, which could be in the future, um, you can just eliminate it. You know, just kill it if you don't like it. And I might be doing that. I'm going to go in with some dark right here with my wine. And that's just Hooker's Green Dark. Yep. It might have a little bit of a lizard with it, yes. Just a few brush strokes. Hit this side of my wine. And um, my flowers, I'm going to take some light green, which is my yellow, a little white. My cadmium yellow and, my, and a little bit of white and the hooker's green. And I'm going to go in because these flowers, they start off green before they turn white. Just add a little bit there. And then maybe some purple, brilliant purple, toned down with a little bit of white. And that's going to be like a shadow side of these flowers. See, all my little drips are getting covered up. That's why they didn't bother me so much. And you know what? I think I'll, I'll just show you how easy it is to kill something like a pear. This pear, I don't like, I don't like its position, so I'm just going to paint right over it. And... And that's going to be a white table that's on a, everything's sitting on a white tablecloth. I know this picture might be casting a shadow, so let's put that in. to make it nice. I'm going to uh, show you something. I know that's not maybe quite reading as cheese, but we're going to uh, just put a little brown in there. And you made the brown by? That's just raw sienna. Okay. 
sometimes I'm just like thinking in my brain, oh, what if I were to try this? And I'm not sure it's going to work. And so I'm lightening it up a little bit there with some maples yellow. This is a little bit, uh, I want this. You just paint right over things to, um, to get rid of them. If you're struggling with anything in a painting, it's best just to get rid of it. Even if you really kind of like it, it, but it doesn't help the painting. I'm just going in with white. I'm going to brighten it up over here where this tablecloth is. And this is all very light. I'm going to darken this up, but I can't right now because it's wet. Now, this is really fun. I'm going to show. I'm going to go to a smaller brush. We're getting towards the end of this painting. Now I might, you know, at another day, come in and just mess around with some really small details. And before I put a wire on the back, I'm going to go back in with a little bit of my. You know, if everything looks a little wonky, it's because I'm standing over to the side of my canvas and, you know, normally I'd be standing right in front of it, and so it's, it's a lot easier, but, but for you all, I'm doing this. Look at that bright red. And that's a cadmium? That's a cad, yes, I'm sorry, that's cadmium, um, red medium. And then um, you can take your real dark and make some lines around your glass. See, you paint right through glass. And now this is kind of fun. I'm going to take some white. You can add another tint of color to it. And then just a, maybe a little Naples yellow. And I'm just going to go up to the rim of the glass. Let's start here and just go. And that's a reflection. I'm going to put some reflections on my wine bottle. And then some reflections. This is at the end. Pop. On my picture. So I'm just about done. Whenever you put do uh, a, a, a still light, you want to make it really dark where anything is sitting on a surface. And this might be kind of hard to work in this area right here that's my problem area because it's wet. But this needs to be real dark underneath where it is, where it's sitting on the um, cutting board. I want this to be um, dark, but you know, I will, I will analyze this later and um, tweak it at the very, very end. when I can stand right in front of it. So, and then I'm going to take some raw sienna, some Naples yellow. I'm going to pop, put a little cork right there. That's fun. Maybe I'll repeat that color somewhere here. We always have to repeat the color. I know I have red right there, that cad red, but I'm going to put just a little bit there just to make your eyes um, travel around the canvas. A little bit is in the wine bottle still. You know, when you paint the canvas red first, it always seems to know, or, or a little bit of red always pops out, and it seems to always pop out in the right places. So that's it. That's it for today, I think. And I'll, um, after it dries, I'll sign my name down at the bottom, and I'll put a wire on it, and I'll paint the sides. And I'll paint the sides with one solid color. I don't paint my image around the canvas. 
Um, a lot of people like to do that, but a lot of people wrap prints around the side of the canvas. So this will distinguish yours and make it look more original. So just take a solid color. I'll probably pick this color right here and put it all around the side and hang it. Spray a varnish on it and I'll be good to go. So that's it and I think I'm just about done. All I'm going to do is sign it. I'm going to paint the sides with a solid color. Not, I'm not going to take the image and wrap it around the edges because a lot of prints are done that way. I'm going to make this look more original and take a solid color, uh, probably that color right there, wrap it, you know, paint it around the sides and put a, a wire on the back and spray it with any kind of varnish. You can do a satin, you can do a gloss, whatever your, your choice is. And that was hooker's green with a little alizarin. Alizarin crimson okay. will give you that really great dark. So that's about it for this still life. I might, I might go back in with a small brush maybe tomorrow when it's dry, totally bone dry, and um, just tweak it a little bit when I can say, stand right in front of it. So, all right, thank you, and we'll see you at the next lesson. Bye.